Welcome everyone to the webinar of Reload, Backup and Disaster Recovery for GroupWise. We're really excited that all of you could join us today, and we're really excited to bring you uh, Tay Kratzer, the developer of Reload, um, to be able to show you um, some of the features of this great solution and how it can help you make sure that your GroupWise solution is completely backed up and that you have failover for that. Uh, my name is Q Mangus. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Guava, and I'll be your host today. Um, a few items to take note of before we get started. One, this webinar is being recorded, so you will have access to the recording. Um, here, you'll, you'll be getting an email shortly after the webinar ends, um, so look for that. If you have questions for Tay, feel free to put those through in the in the chat or the Q&A, and we will uh, we will get to those. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, give the time to Tay, and uh, let me make him the presenter. Once again, everyone, thanks for being here. And if you do have questions, feel free to put those through, and we'll have some time also at the end to uh, get to those. So let's go ahead and make him. Okay, terrific. Uh, thank you, Q. And we've got some kind of an echo. Let's see here. Okay, there we go, Q. <laughs> okay, I think you can hear me just fine. Um, Q, uh, give me a thumbs up or something like that in Skype and uh, let me know that that's the case. And uh, okay, terrific. Okay, all right. Thank you. Well, um, thank you everyone for coming and, and I, I hope this is worthwhile for you. I, I think we probably have uh, all different kinds of people here, probably people that uh, have reload, and so I hope to show you stuff that maybe you you didn't think about, uh, you know, maybe a new approach to, to utilizing the software, and, and those that uh, perhaps, uh, you know, don't have reload for group-wise, I think you'll see that this is, uh, is quite the solution. <clears throat> so, um, you know, Reload was born of uh, when I actually used to work at Novell, um, and it was, uh, and, and now I've kind of come full circle. I'm back at Microfocus, but uh, um, I, it was, it came from customer need. Um, uh, specifically, I was working with a, some very large accounts, and I saw that when we went to get data back, um, even though they had some some very good backup solutions in place, um, doing so uh, just wasn't friendly, and uh, it was way too time consuming. And so, um, you know, that's really why customers love Reload is is how it saves you on time. So, just to give you a for instance, okay, I'm gonna without telling you all the things that are behind it, and then maybe I'll, I'll tell you a little bit later, but um, let's just imagine I'm here in my mailbox, okay, and I'm going to delete an item here. Uh, let's Steve, delete this item here from Steve. Um, I'm going to say delete and empty. Now let me just show you here. Okay, here's my trash. I'm at 141 items. If I highlight that item and I say delete and empty, just kind of in one fell swoop, okay, you'll notice that I'm still at 141 trash items. So that means that item is, is gone. And so all that I need to do here inside of my GroupWise client is just select the backup option from the rocker bar and then what we're what we're experiencing here right now is that the groupwise client contacts the groupwise POA says hey there's some restore area defined there back in groupwise administration and uh, I can't get there but can you get there for me and the groupwise POA has a NFS mount over to the reload server and so he says yeah I can get to that location and he says, okay, great, show me the items that are in the backup that aren't in my live, my, my live mailbox, okay? And so that's why it took a, in a moment there to kind of churn because it was going to show us only the items that aren't in our live mailbox. And then I can highlight the item and I can just do a right mouse click and restore and that item is going to be right back into my mailbox. So if we slide down here to when I originally got that email from Steve, uh, did I slide past it? Here we go. Here it, here it is. Okay. So there's that email restored um, in all its glory um, back to my production mailbox um, with tremendous ease. Okay. So that's because of some, some cool things in the architecture of GroupWise. There was nothing installed to the GroupWise client. So there's, there's nothing that you have to implement at the GroupWise client level. This backup feature is automatically in there when you define what's called a restore area inside of GroupWise. And so, um, you know, wow, what a time savings. And, and it's very easy for me as an administrator to go in and, and say, hey, um, let's access a backup um, from, you know, way back 
to whenever I've you know indicated how many backups I want to keep and so I can do that and we can jump into that time machine and get items from that particular backup so very very powerful okay <clears throat> now another thing is um, <clears throat> reload has push button disaster recovery so <clears throat> in like manner just as I was able to restore an item because it's a group wise message store that's just wholly contained here on the reload server so your your post office you know gets backed up every night over to the reload server now what's really slick is is um, the, the size of the amount of data that gets replicated so let's say there's a hundred gigabytes um, in your post office um, the about 10 gigabytes is what needs to be replicated and stored each night over to the reload server and then it just builds on the the, the blobs of the OF files directories that it had from the past and so the the nightly backups of a given post office one um, are uh, don't take much space and two they're very quick and so so it's a tr it's it's a full group wise post office there so all that I need to do to enable disaster recovery is uh, click on this ambulance button and when I do so, um, you know, all these actions kick into place, but the net result is, is it fires up a group-wise POA. It takes about a minute for that to come up. Fires up a group-wise POA. I can then go ahead into, into the uh, group-wise system, and I could switch the A record okay, for the DNS address of beg1.guava.com. Do you see that here? My, my TCP IP address is beg1.guava.com. I simply need to flip that A record for beg1.guava.com to um, equal the IP address that's bound on my reload server that's hosting the GroupWise POA. So there we go. There's a GroupWise POA up and running. Um, and it's as easy as switching an IP uh, address, uh, A record, and so forth, and I can log into that. Um, and just to demonstrate that for you, I'm going to go into my GroupWise client here, and um, just a moment here, I unloaded my client, and I'm just waiting for it to come back up and then I'll pull it over to this screen. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to go into the client right here, and I'm just going to say, because I don't have the ability to switch that A record, um, I don't have, the, you know, I don't administer this particular system, but um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and fire up, and I'm now running my GroupWise client here against that disaster recovery POA, and so you can see right there, reload2.guava.com versus beg1.guava.com, okay? So you can see how simple disaster recovery is. Now, the really neat thing, too, is, is every time you use reload for restoring an item, um, you're proving, um, I'm going to go ahead and log into my GroupWise client here again, um, so let me just switch this here. Anyways, every time that you restore an item, you are proving that you have a good disaster recovery system. So by making the backup so usable and you know vis-a-vis -vis this you know backup feature that we showed here, right? By making it so usable, you've proven your disaster recovery solution because it's really the same data. It's just a slightly different approach to connecting to the data, okay? I'm going to turn off disaster recovery here and and uh, just go back to normal mode. Okay, so, um, and we also have disaster recovery for domains, um, and restoring domain databases too is, is easy. You can go in here, you can choose a backup, and uh, click on that, select the backup, and then you can download it as a zip file. Um, so if I go in here, I open this up, this zip file, it's got a little header inside of it and it tells you when that item was you know backed up so this is the backup from Sunday November 27th that I selected so you know accessing backups is extremely simple um, extremely fast okay now <clears throat> um, so another thing that people really like is the reliability of Reload. Reload, Reload runs on a SUSE Linux box, and uh, that's probably part of the main reason that it's so reliable is, is that that platform is so reliable. So it's really just set it and forgive, forget it. Um, so, you know, um, 
what reload does is because it just is set it and forget it um, we've also given you this ability to get a daily status report and so you can go in there and say hey I want this individual to get this status report uh, every day to tell me uh, the status of the reload server and the profiles on it okay um, you can also monitor your reload server um, with Nagios or PRTG if you're familiar with that software that's what we use here in our cloud to monitor our reload servers um, <clears throat> the um, um, another really nice thing about Reload that I want to show you here is, is you've got this, uh, you know, everyone that's managing um, Reload systems, typically they're managing 20 or 30 other systems. And my goal with Reload is for, um, after you've gotten all set up, um, that you really don't have to uh, become certified in this software. You, you, it's really easy to use. And so everything that you do, as you hover over it, um, it gives you an indication as to what that um, that setting is or what that value is trying to represent um, and so when you go into the um, web interface you can just highlight and you get what's called inline documentation to help you understand that feature okay um, there's also very clear health status of your reload server right here up at the top that tells you the status. Um, the things that we're monitoring with these uh, uh, profiles is time and space. In other words, um, what was the last time that a backup went on um, and how much space is available for you to store backups. And so those two things are monitored every minute and uh, reported to you just as soon as there's some kind of a problem uh, based on the, the um, thresholds that you've set. Um, the uh, another thing is this has been really handy for I've helped customers manage really large systems and um, and let's say they discover a new feature like how users can access backups we can click on configure all profiles and this same panel will pull up for all the other profiles so if you've got eight post offices that you're backing up and and you <clears throat> you finally discover a feature that you're like oh that's really cool you can click on configure all profiles and it will show you the other profiles um, for that particular panel and you can go in and, and make those modifications so uh, super um, the idea is to make this very, very easy for you. Um, so I'm I'm going off to some notes, kind of some written notes here, so you can't see what I'm I'm looking at, but uh, I want to just let you see the reload interface. Um, oh yeah, really, really important thing is is that. Um, your backups are very very fast typically with reload um, and in fact something that we added in the latest version of reload um, reload 5 is the ability to implement what's called collectors um, so here's the idea behind the collectors and this is this might be really helpful for those of you already have that that already have reload um, to consider implementing <clears throat> so with a collector the idea is is you can put a piece of software over on your group by server and that collector can then replicate the data over to your reload server the the benefit is is um, there's quite a bit less data that needs to go across the wire versus when the reload server needs to get say for example an NFS mount to your post office and pull the data across um, I had a customer for example uh, out in Europe um, they um, by implementing the collector technology they sped up their backups uh, by by about 10 times because the reload server was about uh, 50 kilometers from their group wise server which I understand the, the, the notion of putting an off-site reload server is, is uh, obviously uh, a great idea uh, but they hadn't implemented an online uh, on-site reload server so they had this off-site reload server and it was sitting there getting an NFS mount to their live post office to pull the data across and that was just coming across slowly and so with this collector technology in a sense it's kind of like having a little reload server on your um, on-site location um, because Reload is running right on the post office and it's using just a little bit of disk space um, the equivalent of about two times the size of the total size of the OF user and OFMSG directory um, what's slick is when you go into a profile 
and you go to the configure option there and you go to post office and POA settings, it tells you the amount of disk space that would be required on the live post office if in fact you were to implement a collector. Okay, um, so anyway, so uh, this collector can make your backups be very efficient, make them very fast. Just in general, people find that reload backups are are very very fast, um, and this then allows them to go in and to say, hey, you know what? If I'm getting this backup so quickly, why don't I get a backup? You know, when you when you think about it, it's really nice that you can go in here and you can. Um, access multiple backups, um, so that's great, but what, when it comes to disaster recovery, the most important backup is the most recent backup, and so you can go into your backup job settings and you can set up what's called intraday backups, and so that's what we're doing in, in our particular uh, environment here. We're getting a backup uh, every eight hours. Um, we're getting one at 4 a.m., one at noon, and one at uh, 8 p.m. Um, I think that's when, when we go on. Yeah, 8 p.m. is when our standard backup, the, the final backup for the day goes on. And so uh, that's another advantage to getting things so quickly is, is you know, you get your backups um, more, more than once in a day. So you see this particular post office that I'm on um, has, uh, we get the backup in three minutes a day. Uh, to give an example, I had a customer uh, out in Texas, about a 250 gig post office with about 250 users, and we were backing them up to our cloud uh, each night in about eight minutes a night uh, using this, uh, using the collector technology. So it's uh, very, very fast backups, and, and something to, to realize is that every reload backup is effectively a full backup. So it's, um, although it, it, it's, it acts as though it's an incremental in some ways, it is a full because all of the blob files, the OF files uh, um, directory, uh, um, is there. Uh, it just doesn't have to re-replicate that every night. It just re-replicates or just replicates the new blob files. And and in a group-wise post office, 90% of the data is in the OF files directory. And so um, that's the the efficiency of reload is the fact that every one of these backups that that I showed you here, um, right here. Every one of these backups, if we were to look at the backups on disk, you would see um, a directory called Tuesday, December 6th, okay, and Monday, December 5th, okay. But if you were to go into that directory, you'd see an OF user directory, you'd see an OF MSG directory, and you'd see an OF files directory, but the OF files directory is actually a symbolic link to a shared OF files directory that every one of these backups shares. And so the amount of disk space taken on the reload server is, is very small. It's about about uh, 2.5 times the size of your post office is what you need in total disk space on your reload server to store about 14 backups. Okay, so instead of 14 times the size of the post office, you need about two and a half times the size of the post office. So, very very powerful, um, you know, functionality um, in, in reload for fast backups and and restoring lots of backups. Um, <clears throat> So I'm um, just sorry, just looking at my notes here again. Okay, so let's talk about some other really uh, notable features inside of Reload that uh, that I want to point out to you. Um, there's the ability inside of Reload to create tape backups. So you can tell Reload to take, um, you know, like say like every week, have it wrap up all of the backups um, and that blobs, that shared blobs directory and push it into a tar file. Um, and we actually have some customers that had rather large tar files. They'd be over a, ten, uh, a terabyte. And so uh, we added this ability to split those tar files to, you know, whatever value that you'd like. Um, the default value is 10 gigabytes, but you can certainly change that if you enable that feature. Um, <clears throat> and then also what's nice is um, we, you can execute scripts, um, if you like, uh, prior to, or you know, some other command, prior to the tar job started, starting or stopping. So I'll just give you an example. What we do here at Guava is uh, when that uh, tar job goes on, um, the um, FTP uh, server, sorry, the uh, the tape server um, is a Windows box that has a tape drive attached to it, and then that tape is taken off site. And uh, 
that Windows uh, server, what we do is we FTP to it vis-a-vis uh, -vis this uh, FTP script and uh, send the, the newest tar file up to um, that uh, server and then it gets put on to tape um, at whatever interval that it does that. And so that's a, that's a really nice uh, functionality, very, very powerful functionality in tar backups. Um, something else uh, that, that a lot of customers uh, that have reload, and this has been around for a while, but uh, a lot of customers haven't implemented this. This is called the Quick Finder Resolution Agent, and, and it has nothing to do with backups, but uh, it has everything to do with group-wise. Um, I um, used to manage uh, a shop, uh, about 600 users across uh, uh, four uh, geographical locations. It was a law firm, and um, one of the um, things that I got hit with quite a bit was a user would go into their mailbox and they'd try and do a find and they knew the item that they were looking for was inside of their mailbox but when they used the find they couldn't they couldn't actually find the, the feature the, I'm sorry the, the email and uh, the reason that was was their mailbox had been rebuilt and uh, if you know what happens when that happens inside of GroupWise, it does a structural rebuild of the database, and thus all the index pointers are incorrect, and so uh, it deletes the indexes and it tells GroupWise to re-index those t those items, you know, a little bit over time. About 2,000 items by default is is how GroupWise does it. So every night it does, you know, 2,000 new items. Well, if you've got um, 10,000 items in your mailbox, it could take you up to you know five days or so until all of the items in your mailbox have been indexed. And so what's slick about this feature, the Quick Find Resolution Agent is, is it, it discovers this condition in which databases, when it goes out and does a backup, it discovers the condition in which the databases have been rebuilt, and it says, you know what, um, let's go ahead and request that the Quick Find indexes be rebuilt for this particular user, and request that all of them are rebuilt instead of uh, just you know the 2,000 a night that's done uh, by default and so that's a that's a really a slick feature now it can be that can be uh, resource intensive and so you can tell uh, reload hey uh, during this exclusion window uh, don't run um, the quick finder indexes so you know maybe during business hours don't run rerun this uh, quick finder indexing for all of the items in a particular user's mailbox um, and if if that's the case, what will happen is, is we'll just send an email to you and say, hey, I discovered this condition in which the user's um, mailbox needs to, uh, the indexes need to be rebuilt, um, and I didn't do it because of the exclusion window, um, but when you'd like to do it, just click on this link, and it gives you a link that you just literally just click on right inside of the email, and it will go out and, and instigate this, uh, um, this feature. So uh, we don't currently have this enabled in our system, but it uh, works great and uh, recommend those of you that have Reload to consider implementing that uh, software. Okay, so now let's talk about um, collectors f a little bit more. So we talked about the value of a collector is, uh, one of the values is the ability to replicate your data from your group wise server directly over to your reload server instead of your reload server getting a connection to pull the data across it's a push method and it's a lot more efficient because what we do is is we we um, DB copy the data locally um, on the group wise server and then we rsync or use rsync type technology to to um, rsync the data over to the reload server. So the net result is, is we send over, instead of the entire database, we send over just the deltas in the database. Um, and so that's a really powerful feature. But let's talk about um, another um, functionality that you can use with the collector. So let me just set the stage here for you. Um, I'm on a post office called Beg2PO, okay? So if we go to help about, okay, and you can see I'm in this post office called Beg2PO. My TCP IP address is beg1.guava.com. I don't know exactly what the reasoning is behind that, but nonetheless. Um, but, uh, but the post office is Beg2PO. And so this is where my post office is being backed up, um, is with this uh, reload profile. Okay. 
Now, uh, my post office is sitting in Montreal, Canada, at uh, Guava's offices, the, 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 the headquarter offices in Montreal, Canada. And uh, this, this actual server that we're looking at is also in Montreal, Canada. And so it's, it's doing a backup, it's getting an NFS mount, pulling the data across, getting that backup in you know, less than four minutes uh, uh, at each time that it does a backup. But then what's really nice is, is this collector is integrated with this profile because we've gone in here and uh, we've gone to configure and we've gone to backup job settings and we've gone to, sorry, right here, advanced settings and it says start a backup on the linked profile collect one and so collect one is designed to get the most current backup okay from beg 2 po that first profile. And so what it does is, is it then replicates that post office in Montreal, Canada to a server here in Provo, Utah. In fact, I'm just going to click here on this link. There we go. And this is the, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to get out of the F11, get out of this so you can kind of see how this works. Okay, so this this reload server that it's connected to um, is in Provo, Utah, and so it's replicating it all the way from Montreal, Canada, to Provo, Utah, and um, and this data is uh, let's just see how long it takes to get that replicated. Uh, yeah, okay. So the total time to replicate and then back up the data is seven minutes and forty seconds to get that post office from. Montreal over to Provo. And then what it also does is, is it takes and it replicates the data to another server. It replicates it to reloaddemo.guava.com. This is the uh, server that we make available to customers to be able to just go out and just kind of see how reload works. And so it replicates that data to another server um, called reloaddemo.guava.com. And then we could s replicate it to yet another server. So for example, I'm just showing here that you could replicate this to Guava's cloud or some other, you know, a partner cloud or whatever it is that you'd like to do. So every backup can be replicated to, you know, up to three locations using this collector technology. And what's slick too is, is the collector technology doesn't have to be implemented on your live server like I talked about. Um, you can, so in this, in this scenario, we didn't put the collector on the live post office. There really wasn't a need because we get the data so quickly using the kind of the traditional manner. Um, but then we put a collector here that then pushes the data to two other completely different locations. So there's basically three copies of my post office on, on you know, three totally separate post offices uh, in two geographical locations. So very powerful, um, something for you to consider, and particularly if you already have Reload, you may want to, to look at uh, uh, implementing that. So here's some other notable features that um, that are uh, great. You can go into reload, and let's say that someone deleted some items. You know, they just came back from vacation. They realized they've been gone for seven days, or you know, uh, maybe even longer. And they realized, oh shoot, there's some items that they deleted. They didn't mean to do so, and. Uh, and gee, can, they, can you help them with that? And you're like, oh, you know what? Um, I'm going to have some time in a while, but let's just go ahead and let's take that particular backup and let's freeze it, okay? And so what that does is um, all the other backups that you've you know, not frozen, they'll roll off just as they must uh, you know, to keep your disk space down and so forth. But this one that you've frozen uh, doesn't roll off. And when you've, you've freeze a backup, it doesn't um, affect your total backup count. So for example, when you go into um, reload and you go into configure it and you configure the backup job settings, you see this number of backups to keep? The frozen backup won't um, factor into the number of backups to keep. So it doesn't, it does, there's no penalty to having that frozen backup outside of a little bit of disk space uh, that it requires. If you've got sufficient disk space, then that's not going to be a problem. So if I go to backups here and you'll see that this uh, has an underscore F next to it, which means it's frozen. And then just, you know, as soon as I've finished my task, uh, 
whatever it be in conjunction with that backup, it's just as easy to unfreeze the item, okay, or the backup, okay. So that's a uh, wonderful uh, feature. So um, migration, let's talk about that. Um, you know, we talked about disaster recovery and the ability to to quickly you know cut over what was what was really neat was uh, the other day well it was neat for me i don't know if it was neat for for the end users <laughs> but uh, what was really neat for me was of course, as you know, uh, we've been uh, purchased by Microfocus, which is just awesome because there's so many synergies and, and integrations and so forth that we can drive further with, with both of our products. And um, anyways, uh, Microfocus has had Reload for uh, several years, um, uh, probably, uh, gee, eight or nine years they've, they've had Reload uh, implemented for their, their production system, for their development system. Um, a lot of the folks in the GroupWise team uh, are on development systems they in a sense you know they eat their own dog food and they want to they want to be able to do testing with a fat without affecting you know the corporate system and so forth and so anyways there was this particular post office uh, PRV 62 was the post office and uh, this same post office had the product manager for groupwise on it and uh, they they lost the the server uh, some kind of a problem with the disk and uh, so they had to cut over the reload server um, the, uh, the 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 lead guy that administers this he was out on medical leave and so a kind of a panicked uh, person that took their job uh, uh, called me and you know gee what do we do here you know I said well you you click the button <laughs> um, and I, I'd like to say it was that easy there was some other things they didn't have DNS names for their post offices so that made it kind of a pain um, and then there was some stuff with some certificates and stuff that that uh, made it so that their mobile users couldn't connect um, but you know we worked through stuff and um, you know but it, as far as the reload end it was just a matter of clicking the button um, and then we we just had to make some other settings changes and and within short time uh, the users were up and running now uh, the next day they recovered their post office or that that server okay um, that they had uh, had some troubles with and so now we had a scenario in which we had some data because they were only doing backups once a day so let's say you know let's say I, I can't remember exactly what the times were but let's say that uh, you know their backup went on at 8 p.m. and but then their server failed at noon the next day okay um, well um, you know there's and then we and then we cut over to the reload server right so the reload server really isn't up to date it's really got the stuff from you know 8 p.m. last night and so it's really nice the users can be up and running and so forth and that's that's slick but they've lost mail okay now in this particular customer environment uh, at Microfocus um, they brought that server back up and we're like hey you know what why don't we merge the data and uh, what's really slick is you can do that is assuming that you have group wise 2014 or better um, you can easily go in there's a little script that we ship and we've got it out on our website um, you can you can run this script and what it'll do is it'll say okay um, here's my restore area and so we just kept our reload server was hosting the post office we mounted it over to the groupwise server because again the reload server is now the production server at the moment and the groupwise server is is effectively our backup okay uh, or at least a backup of a portion of the data remember the data from 8 p.m. till 12 you know noon uh, you know of the failure failure okay a, a day before and so what we did was we defined that restore area, we ran the script, and basically it told the group ice POA, hey, go to this restore area, which is again a mount to the production post office where it used to be and uh, you look in there look for items that uh, aren't here uh, in the you know post office which again is hosted on the reload server and you restore any items um, from there to the you know group wise post office on the reload server and it, it took about you know uh, half an hour or so for it to do that um, but then bada bing you know uh, everything was restored so the net effect because they were able to get their server back okay the, the, the net effect was we lost nothing now if they would lost their server then that wouldn't have been the case we obviously would have lost the data from 8 p.m. till till noon but at least we wouldn't have lost the post office uh, which which is uh, very important so 
So there's a, a wonderful migration utility inside of Reload. Um, and with that migration utility, it's all wizard driven. It's very simple to run. Um, and what's, what Slick is, is it sends you emails along the way while you're doing a migration. It'll say, hey, I got the databases over. I'm still getting the blobs. And this is how long this has taken and so forth. And so when you have a disaster, we typically tell people, hey, run the, uh, the migration without bringing the post office down. That way you can see how it works see how long it's going to take and that way you you really have a really accurate picture as to what your downtime window will be as you do as you migrate the data over now what slick is is it has what's called a pre-migration and with the pre-migration feature um, it migrates the OF files directly directory only and again that's 90% of your data so if you've done the pre-migration um, the actual migration uh, goes rather quickly so this particular customer environment um, you know the pre-migration took uh, I want to say like an hour and a half or something like that and uh, and then the final migration because we've done the pre-migration took about six minutes and so they're their whole downtime uh, was, you know, for the migration process was about six minutes. Um, so, uh, some other, a couple other things that I want to uh, point out inside of Reload is, um, well, there's a tablet friendly view for those of you that are into your tablets. Um, and so, um, that's kind of nifty little thing. Um, audit logging. Um, so, uh, a lot of times people go in, they set up Reload, or we help them set it up. Uh, just, you know, those of you who already have Reload, we're offering this, uh, um, you know, health check and kind of as a Christmas present to you. Uh, um, you know, our support department, uh, quite frankly, as Christmas co time comes around, you know, our calls really die off, and, and uh, we've got some time to take a look at people's, uh, um, you know, reload systems or retain or whatever it be and uh, our gift to you is peace of mind knowing that you've got everything um, configured correctly so anyways uh, once you get everything configured correctly um, if you've given multiple people access let's say you give them the help desk uh, access to your reload server uh, you, you know you, you give them that access and you're like well I want to make sure that you know um, if someone makes any settings changes that I'm notified and so you can go in here and you can um, set up um, what's oops, sorry wrong place uh, right here audit notification and so you'll get an email just as soon as anybody makes any changes inside of reload administration it's also kept inside of um, a log file <clears throat> okay um, and you know there's a disaster recovery plan uh, button that's just a URL you can modify that URL to represent your disaster recovery plan. Um, something that I would recommend that people consider is, um, I had to drink water there for a minute, is that I've got a great backup and disaster recovery solution for your group ice post offices and domains, but that's not really everything. You're, um, something that's really important uh, is your internet mail. And so I would recommend that you consider implementing a what's called an alternative uh, or a secondary GUIA um, for your system. And you could you could go in and define that well before a disaster um, and have the whole system integrated in such a manner that literally um, you don't have to do a thing. The system would know, oh gee, I can't get a hold of this GUIA. Oh, but there's an alternative GUIA. And it would get a hold of the GUIA that's, that happens to be hosted on your reload server. Or it could be another place, but that's just something to consider. Um, let's talk about Blueprint here for a minute. Um, you know, now that you've got all of your, your data backed up to your reload server, um, there's an opportunity where this is an opportunistic piece of software that goes, hey, you know what, now that your group by system's over here, rather than us having to tickle and torment your live system in order to, to find out about what's going on uh, inside of your, your message store, your group by's message store, we can generate reports, um, what's called blueprint reports, that tell you about each one of your post offices 
and uh, what's going on in these post offices. Okay, now this is a rather small post office. It's maybe not a really good example, but um, so in this Blueprint report, um, and Blueprint just, you know, is an add-on to Reload. It's a, it's a pretty low-cost add-on uh, to Reload, but uh, uh, what Blueprint does is it, it really runs, uh, it, it runs uh, GW check jobs, uh, individual GW check jobs on each and every individual user. Um, not any kind of a maintenance job, just kind of like to get information, okay? And where does it run it? Right on the Reload server, because you got data there, why not do it there? again versus uh, tormenting your live system in order to get this information and so this uh, this report that we're looking at here and there's multiple reports but this one that we're looking at here is actually three reports in one so this is a cumulative re report right here um, tells us um, the number of post the number of users uh, their uh, active mailboxes. Um, you can see this this post office is actually going away very soon. We're moving everything over to the microfocus system. Uh, I'm one of the last holdouts on this particular post office. But uh, so here's uh, 16 um, mailboxes, three that are active, th 13 that are inactive. Now, you, now here's what's handy is you go, wow, look at all of the disk space that's being wasted by these inactive mailboxes, you know, gee, uh, should we consider retain or, you know, um, you know, and a lot of times people have inactive mailboxes, but they don't really know the ramifications of that. They don't know, you know, who the users are exactly, and uh, and this tells you, um, you know, that data in a cumulative report. But what's also nice is is it it shows you. Um, each of the individual users here. So this is another part of this report. Uh, so it's a second part of the report, and it just accumulates all of the users that it's flagged to let you know, hey, there's something about this mailbox. And again, the, the thing that it's really trying to flag for you here is is when they last logged in. Okay, and so we can see that these these mailboxes um, we may want to you know dredge them into retain and just entirely delete them. You know, um, and when you click on a particular user, you can then go into um, into here and and see a little bit more data on this. You could also have this little dial pad view here, so you can quickly um, you know bounce around in this report, which is extremely helpful when you have a larger post office with hundreds and hundreds of users or even thousands of users. This little dial pad is is very very powerful. So here we go. We look at my mailbox, and let's say um, I'm like, oh gee, this guy is really close on his disk space. You know, um, I'm gonna send him an email and tell him, you know, please clean out your email. And uh, so what Slick is, is it'll pop up an email, pre-populates it with the information that you might want, and uh, if you'd like, and then you can uh, uh, send off your message to them. Uh, it also can send, Blueprint can send individual mail I, mailbox reports to the users whenever it runs. So uh, let me just show that to you here. If I go to Configure and I go to Blueprint, um, User Reports, uh, no, sorry, Advanced Settings, here we go personal mailbox report. So here's an example. The user would get a mailbox report similar to this. So it would just be right inside of an email, just contained inside of the message body. And it doesn't say <clears throat> guava or blueprint because, you know, the user really doesn't care about that. So there's not all this branding. And so it just says, hey, here's your mailbox report. And uh, and then what's what's really nice is is you can also design it that you can put in custom text. So it's just a file. You can just put a file out there on the reload server in a particular location. The document tosh, documentation talks about that. And so you put that uh, that file out there, and it will it will put that right here in this section of the report. Okay. And then what we're also witnessing right here is what's called. Um, threshold highlighting. So you can say, hey, if they're over a particular threshold in size or number of days and so forth, um, I want you to flag that item with this particular HTML color. And you can go out there and you can look for HTML colors. You can Google those and, uh, you know, you can make it pink or green, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but this is uh, this is an example of the kind of reports that your end users can get. In fact, you can even design it where you have um, exclusion reports or even inclusion reports. So on this particular post office, um, I just made an inclusion report just for myself so that I get my report every week. Um, and 
and no one else is getting the report, report um, because they're not in the uh, inclusion list. So you don't have to use inclusion exclusion lists, but you can if you want to exclude or only include certain people. Uh, what this, where you might use this is, is let's say for example that you identify, um, you know, your your top, um, you know. 50 users in a, in a larger post office. Again, this isn't a good example, but uh, if I go here and I go to my post office here, I go to Blueprint Reports, you see that you can, you can view um, this CSV file or you can actually download the CSV file. So I might just download it into my spreadsheet like uh, Excel and then I would just sort on a column and bam, I could get you know the top 50 um, you know users uh, according to mailbox size. Okay, Something that's really nice inside of the CSV file too is, is when I made this software I went out and I looked at other monitoring solutions and I said what do they not have, what do they not have <laughs> that, that would be very helpful for people and, and one of the things that I found was is a lot of times they'll represent things in, um, in K or something like that and, and I've tried to get away from that um, but I also gave you a sortable field so when you pull this in your spreadsheet imagine I, I don't have Excel on this box but if I did I could pull this in and, I, and you could see I could just sort on this field say apply it to all you know all columns and bam it would um, sort based on size because this is just a raw you know integer value instead of you know kind of a human readable value and so um, so we've made these uh, blueprint reports very very useful in the sense of instead of us putting in a database and you having to try and tickle and tease that information through some complicated UI, we just go, hey, let's give you the report and you can go into your, you know, your favorite spreadsheet and do with it as you'd like. And so that's what we give you. And there's, there's tons of data points inside of this blueprint report. So for example, let's say um, you're trying to um, uh, control, uh, you know, the size of the growth of mailboxes, um, but and so you set, you know, some kind of a policy at, you know, uh, 500 megabytes is kind of looking like the policy they were trying to do here. Okay, but then you you're like, you know, what we got these people that are just, you know, they they whined and complain complained and they need more disk space because of their their job. Um, a title, and I'm purposely picking on myself here, <laughs> and uh, and so you you bump up the the disk space for them. Okay, well try and track that. Okay, try and figure out what uh, what the limits are for them. And so Blueprint, uh, really nice f feature with that is is you can you can easily assess you know what the limits are for your users, and and uh, uh, that's. Uh, you know, one example of a really nice feature. Another feature here too um, is, you know, what what version of client are they using? Um, you know, what's the um, how long have people been inactive and so forth? And this is this is again, this is a very very small post office, so it doesn't really give um, credence to uh, the the value of Blueprint. I find that Blueprint becomes more and more valuable the larger the system is because uh, that's where you want to quickly assess uh, information, and that's where Blueprint is uh, very very helpful. Um, and so. Um, that is everything that I figured that I wanted to show you about uh, Reload for GroupWise. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I should demonstrate. Um, the, uh, maybe I'll just quickly look at some stuff here, show you that we have what's called an event log and an agent log. Running Reload's very, very simple. What's really nice is um, Unlike other software, instead of dumping everything into you know this this big massive log file that um, you got to kind of sort through, um, we have an event log that um, tells you at a high level what's going on, and then you have an agent log, which is your programmatic log, which can be helpful um, you know when troubleshooting things. But in reality, most of the time you aren't troubleshooting things. In fact, uh, my goal is for you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not troubleshooting stuff. You're just going in here and using the software, and you're maybe doing a little bit of analysis for how long things take or whatever it be, um, and, and you don't have to dig through some, some massive log. Um, you know, the agent log. You can look at the, uh, the event log. <clears throat> so that is 
reload for group wise. I think I'm ahead of time. Um, if there's any questions, Q, I'll go ahead and take those. If not, uh, I'd like to thank you all for for joining in uh, our demonstration of reload for group wise. Thanks, Tay, and thanks everyone for being here. I don't see any other questions at this time, um, so looks like you covered it all. <laughs> Thanks again for being here and look for that email with the recording and uh, we'll see you on the next one.